I never would have been able to go to medical school if it wasn't for the Navy. So when people ask me, well, how has the Navy benefited you? I owe everything, everything to the Navy. I'm Captain Cynthia Macri, Medical Corps, United States Navy, and I am the Special Assistant for Diversity to the Chief of Naval Operations. When I got into medical school, there was the issue of tuition, and I decided I always wanted to be in the Navy anyway. So I um, walked over Navy recruiter, and I said, hey, I know there's a scholarship, can I have it? <laughs> so I got a Navy scholarship, the Health Professions um, Scholarship, and I went to Temple Medical School on that scholarship. It was very simple. They paid for full tuition and um, all my books, any fees that I had. I didn't have to worry about anything, and I, I graduated from medical school completely debt-free. And I think a lot of people don't realize how liberating that is, not having any debt. The Navy provided not just the funding for my um, medical education, but I met incredible people, um, great mentors, and really learned to work in a collaborative environment with people from all different backgrounds and different ranks and different specialties. When you see where everybody fits together in the enterprise, it it really makes you value um, every patient that walks into your office. The thing that I find to be the most attractive is that when you see a patient, you see them as a part of the whole Navy, the whole network. Three main reasons why I stay in, and one is because it is truly because of the patients. The second reason is because of our support staff. Our corpsmen go out to the front lines, they bring the patients back to us. They make our practice so much better. I'm a gynecologic oncologist, and we have a conference where we have radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, dietitians. We have physical therapists, the technicians. Everybody works together to make the best plan for the patient. So I can do what's best for my patient every single time. We as healthcare providers in the Navy have to be concerned about keeping a healthy force fit because that healthy force takes care of the national security of our country. And we also want to make sure that those war fighters know that when they are deployed, that we are taking care of their family members as well. You've been sleeping pretty good? In addition, the Navy is a force um, that has been called upon um, to respond rapidly to natural disasters, and the most recent one, of course, in Japan, as well as in Haiti and Indonesia. We provide assistance when needed um, and really focus on the, on the health care and preventive needs of the population in the midst of a disaster. Working as the Special Assistant for the Chief of Naval Operations for Diversity, my um, primary role is to keep the CNO uh, informed on how can the Navy leverage its benefits um, to improve the lives of different minority groups, including women. The Navy is viewed as a leader in um, diversity efforts among the armed services. In order to provide culturally literate um, care, we really need to have more, more people of different backgrounds serving um, not just in you know, engineering, science, technology, um, but also in medicine. It was recommended to me to stay in the clinical side um, for at least 10 years um, so that I could hone my skills as a clinician. Um, but during that time, I also took on roles such as the, um, the OBGYN residency director, and I filled in as the interim gynecologic oncology fellowship director. I've also been on committees for the Society of Gynecologic Oncologists, and I was appointed as a board examiner for the American Board of OBGYN, all as a Navy physician. So your contributions to medicine are not really not restricted to just um, what happens in the, in the Navy. The three critical elements of being a Navy physician is competence, compassion, and caring. When I say competence, I don't just mean that you have to have good grades and you know, good test scores or anything like that. It's much more than that. Competencies include understanding the communities and the experiences that other people have had that shape the way they respond to you. A doctor must also be uh, compassionate 
um, and empathetic, and they have to care not just about the patient himself or herself, but the family and the environment that that person um, you know, lives in every day. It has to truly be about um, the patient and the enterprise that you serve. The two that stand out the most is that you can be a flight surgeon in the Navy. So our doctors actually train in Pensacola, Florida as well, and they are com come out as certified flight surgeons with like wings and everything. Secondly, you can be an undersea medical officer. So, you know, if you like to dive, then dive medicine might be the thing for you. And in fact, there are 12 women already qualified on submarines, right? And they're all medical officers. They're dive medical officers. And you can't have, you, you can never have those experiences in the civilian sector. You know, whether it's at the undergraduate level or it's at the graduate level, we are here to help. If, um, if you are willing to, you know, take that, um, that first step, and make the inquiry. So, you know, make sure you conquer education and then you just have to be a good performer and a person of principle and you can do anything you want. Thank you for watching this Navy webcast. If you have any questions, visit navy.com or find us on Facebook.